Welcome to our Q1 1920 con call. Our CEO, CEO Manish, Group CFO Mr. Ajmera, and CFO Gulshan also join me in, in these deliberations. Our results in this quarter, although lower than the previous quarters, still remain one of the strongest in the industry. Comparing first half of this calendar year over last year, world crude steel production, including China, registered a growth of 4.6% on the back of a very strong 9.9% growth coming from China alone. But if we look at the steel production in the rest of the world without China, after two years of positive growth, it was, a, it was negative 0.4%. Now, coming specifically to the electric car furnace steel production, which is the segment that we cater to, the steel production was down by 4% in the first half of uh, calendar year 2019 in the rest of the world without China, after having grown at a very healthy levels of 8% and 5% in the two preceding years, 2017 and 2018. Some of the large steel producing regions like Europe, Japan, South America, Turkey registered a decline, mainly resulting from slowdown in demand due to an overall sluggishness of the global economy, trade tensions between US and China, and other geopolitical tensions prevailing in some parts of the world. However, United States of America steel production grew by a healthy 5%, where more than two-thirds of the total steel is produced through the electric arc furnace process. The trade sanctions on Iran and uncertain economic and political developments in Turkey and some other countries with a large EAF base also have had an impact on demand of electrodes. Friends, past two years, 2017 and 2018, and in the first quarter of 2019, saw an unprecedented tightness of supply of electrodes, and that fear also created a surge in demand, and many of the large steel companies overbought electrodes, resulting into excess inventories in the pipeline. Amid steel market getting tough starting this year, impacting production and resultant decrease in the demand of steel, coupled with excess inventory of electrodes, which the customers had built last year, resulted into a drop in sales and stabilization of prices. However, from all, indicate, uh, all in available indications, we, we believe that the inventory correction should be correct, completed in the next few quarters and then we see a normalcy restored in the market. Although China continues to register strong steel production growth, but backed by an equally strong internal demand, China's export of steel to the rest of the world still remains at the same low level as the last two, three years. And to that extent, the electric arc furnace steel production in the rest of the world is still strong. China, on the other hand, continues to remain on the path of replacing their old blast furnaces with new electric arc furnace capacities to take its share to 20% through electric arc furnace production by about 2020. China also continues to add electrode capacities to meet their internal demand. However, as China mostly makes lower-grade HP-grade electrodes, we are impacted to the extent of about 20 to 25% of our product mix with declining margins. We believe that once more or less, once more and more electric arc furnaces start production in China, the excess electrode production that we are currently seeing in China would get absorbed due to rising internal demand within China. The price of UHP electrodes, which saw extraordinary levels of increase over the past two years, is now stabilizing 
and going forward, we expect the current levels to sustain in the near future. The needle coke availability has somewhat eased compared to last year, due to which we are producing more UHP electrodes and have consequently reduced the production of non-UHP electrodes. The tightness of supply of needle coke due to rising demand for electrode segment and competing demand from lithium-ion batteries should keep the availability somewhat tight for the near foreseeable future. As you are aware, early this year, we had started our expansion from current levels of 80,000 tons to 100,000 tons. The construction activities the construction activities are in the progress in full swing and we should be ready by the third to fourth quarter of 2021. And after a stabilization period of three to six months, which we have experienced in all our past experiences, past expansions in this business, we should be in the market with these additional products from early 2022. We do believe that this new capacity coming on stream the quality of our products will see a marked improvement due to state-of-the-art equipment that we are currently installing. This will also enable us to do some cost savings and achieve better efficiencies. We are confident that with, with no other new electrode capacity coming in on the ground by then in the Western world, and with the return of a normal growth of the world economy by then, the demand of electrodes will increase sufficiently to, to absorb this entire expanded production of our company. Our sales was less compared to last year as our customers worked through the inventory. We expect the volumes to pick up towards the end of this year by when we believe the inventory correction would have taken place. Electric arc furnace production growth is expected to continue at a long-term CAGR of around 1.5 to 2 percent, generating enough demand for good quality UHP electrodes, and our small expansion should easily get absorbed when we are ready. With our four decades of experience in business, we expect to be a supplier of choice to all our global and Indian customers. With this, I would now hand over the floor to our CFO, Gulshan, to take you through all the financial numbers, and then I, along with my colleagues, Manish and Ajmera, will be very happy to answer any queries that you have. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and good afternoon, friends. For the quarter ended June 2019, HUG recorded revenue from operations of volume of 817 crore as against 1347 crore in the previous quarter and 1587 crore in the corresponding quarter of last financial year. A beta including other income stood at Rs 387 crore in quarter 1 versus 830 crore of previous quarter and 1196 crore in the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. The company reported a net profit of Rs 234 crore in quarter 1 as against 524 crore in the previous quarter and 770 crore in the corresponding quarter of last financial year. In power segment, after successful negotiation at a mutually beneficial terms with a government utility company and we have been able to replace part of a high cost self-generated power which is thermal with a power purchase from the state electricity board. While this step has reduced revenue and bottom line in the power segment, it has had a very favorable impact on the overall power cost of the graphite electrodes making. The company is long term debt free and have been handling treasury operations to the tune of nearly 1400 crore as on date and the average return has been around 7.5 has been around 7.7% per annum on the same. For the quarter ended 30th June 2019, the company has presented a consolidated financial results along with a standalone financial results as a part of compliance. Ex expansion projectives going as per the plan and we expect to be operational by early 2022. The company aims to further strengthen its balance sheet through effective working capital management, thereby creating value for its stakeholders. With this background, I would request questions which we can clarify more. Sure, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, 
may please press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star then one. The first question is from the line of Sonali Salgaukar from Jeffries. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is, in your initial remarks, you mentioned that uh, you know uh, you are expecting the inventories to get corrected in the next few quarters and things should stabilize, uh, and you are expecting volumes to improve by the end of this year. So I wanted to understand what gives us this confidence that probably stabilization will kick in from the coming quarters, considering that uh, it's quite a volatile situation right now. See, a couple of things. As I, as I mentioned in my initial remarks, uh, there was a fairly strong growth in the electric car industry in 2017 and 2018. And uh, only in the last six months or so, and we, we spoke about uh, the reasons, the, uh, the, the general pessimism in the world economy, the Indo-American-China Indo problem, geopolitical issues in Turkey and Middle East. So all of them combined are taking a toll on, uh, on, on everything. And, uh, and obviously steel and electrodes cannot be, cannot be left alone. So what, uh, what gives us uh, some sort of a confidence is that if you, if you have gone through uh, the results and uh, these discussions, public discussions that uh, all other graphite companies have had, uh, everybody seems to have uh, cut back on their production by about 15 to 20 percent. I mean, these are the numbers we have read publicly from uh, our other uh, graphite, uh, uh, other graphite friends from the world. So, so obviously, if everybody has reduced uh, their capacity utilization, their actual production for the next six or nine months, uh, to that extent, the supply is not, uh, not in the market anymore. And uh, my guess is that, uh, again, one of, the, one, of the, one of the main suppliers has also said publicly that uh, they believe that a lot of customers had bought maybe one-third or maybe as much as 40, 45 percent more electrodes than they actually needed. So, so all this gives us a gives us a confidence that uh, then, uh, of course, uh, we we always are in contact with all our customers uh, around the world. So all that gives us an indication that uh, with a cutback in production and uh, and the use of all the stocks which people have been carrying. It would, uh, it would, it should come to a situation in the next uh, couple of quarters that uh, this imbalance will be, will be, will be removed. And uh, as we all know, uh, we don't see, uh, except HEG, nobody has as yet announced any expansion. And uh, as we all have spoken in the past, uh, any expansion of an existing graphite unit will take anywhere between three, three and a half years. And this is exactly what we are, uh, we are talking about. We are, not, uh, we are not going to be ready with this expansion by, let's say, third or fourth quarter of 2021. And then it takes anywhere between three to six months before you can, you can use that facility to the extent of 70, 80%. Uh, it is, it is, it is, this is something which we have seen in all our past uh, debottlenecking and expansion. So, so we are still talking of another close to three years before this additional capacity is available in the market. And until then, if there is no new capacity coming in, and uh, as soon as this uh, inventory adjustment takes place, and uh, going by the past record, uh, uh, an increase, uh, annual increase of around one and a half to two percent, is is all that we are aiming for. I mean, uh, if the electric car furnace industry grows by even one and a half to two percent per annum, 
there is there, there should be enough demand not only to not only for everybody to operate at 85 90% but the additional 20000 tons which we are going to be putting in uh, into the market by early 2022 i mean that 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 is all i mean uh, we 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 cannot say anything more than uh, what what i just explained to you Sure, sir. This has been helpful. So my second question is, uh, what's the update on exports? I mean, especially uh, uh, an update on Iran? No, nothing changes in Iran. I mean, again, I mean, we are, we are not uh, we are not alone in this boat as far as the sanctions are concerned. Uh, whatever products were being exported from India, uh, they they are all in the same boat. And that was that is that used to be one of uh, one of the large markets for uh, the Indian graphite industries because the other two larger companies in the world uh, had stopped exporting to Iran for last four or five years. Sure. Uh, so this capacity expansion that you have just mentioned over the next three years, what would be the capex per annum that we should expect for this? You see, the total amount is 1,200 crores, and uh, I can't tell you very exact numbers, but it's around 400 crores this year, and more or less similar amounts in uh, 2020 and 21. Sure. So ending this quarter, this June ending quarter, what was our utilization and cash position? Yeah, cash cash position as on 30th June was approximately 1650 CRs, and the capacity utilization was 85 percent. Got it. So, so uh, even if I factor that uh, your an annual capex would be about 400 crores, this uh, still leaves a lot of cash on your balance sheet. So, uh, any plans for that, sir? How would you want to utilize that? That's it from my side. I mean, for the time being, I mean, there's nothing very specific on the table. I mean, we keep uh, we keep looking at uh, some opportunities here and there, but I can only assure you that we are uh, we're not going to be irresponsible and use a large chunk of this cash in in a rush. I mean, unless we are very convinced about some uh, something which is not uh, connected to our business. We'll be extremely careful in jumping into this. Got it, sir. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to ask a question. Please press star, then one. The next question is from the line of Ashish Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yep. Hello, sir. Yeah, so my question was similar to what... Uh, uh, previous person asked about the cash. Like we have 1650 cash, uh, crore cash available with us. So, so what is the plan? And you mentioned that if you are looking into something. In past, I think we discussed about some opportunity in Android, uh, Anode uh, or some some other uh, field. So, can you give some more idea about that? Are you still pursuing that? Yeah, that was uh, we did mention that uh, last time and. Uh, uh, we are still looking into it. It's still at a very nascent uh, stage, and that uh, field is completely uh, different. It has to be very well understood. And China has this uh, uh, lithium deposits, and a lead is, uh, has already taken leadership in this electric vehicle segment. Uh, we are also watching how soon um, the Indian government on, and, and, and our country, these electric vehicles, develop. So that is, uh, if you ask us, uh, it's still at a research stage. Uh, and but we continue to keep looking at it. Okay, uh, sir. One more question about the rail coke supply. Uh, are we still facing the the shortages there, and still uh, we are paying the high charges, or we we are seeing the softening of the prices on the rail coke? See, on the availability, as I said, uh, the availability has somewhat eased, and uh, we and as I also said that uh, since we are competing with China. In the low-end market, which is about 20 to 25 percent of our production, we we have intentionally reduced production of uh, non-UHV liquids because of the pricing situation. So, which means we we which means we do need more needle coke to.
to shift our production to the UHP. So for that additional shift of UHP electrodes, we, we have been able to get enough coke. Uh, so as far as the needle coke is concerned, uh, the availability has eased. It is helping us to produce more UHP, where the prices are still much more remunerative than, uh, than the non-UHP. Uh, on the pricing, I mean, we, we always have a half yearly contract, so, so that price uh, gets frozen, uh, got frozen, let's say, in May, June. Okay. So that is what the situation is. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devang Sangvi from ICACI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is regarding utilization levels, what we are targeting for the current year. And I missed the number for Q1, the utilization levels. Uh, Adivang, uh, we think that it should be around 75% for the whole of the year, which was 80% last year. Okay. And the Q1 number would be? Q1 number uh, we produced, it, the capacity utilization is on the basis of production, so it was 85%. However, we have sold lesser than that, and you can notice that in the increase in inventory levels. Right, sir. And this needle cook, which what we have frozen in May, June, so when will it come in our financials in terms of cost? It is also, it's already started reflecting. I mean, the current year profits and the current year costs are already taking care, taking care of that at the higher price. Right, sir. And with supply increasing, is there any chance of the needle cook maybe softening from current levels? I hope so. I mean, I'm sure the, the coke suppliers are, are looking at uh, the graphite market and they're as much aware about the conditions as we are. Right, sir. And for the quarter, what was the export and domestic mix? It's again uh, two thirds, one third. Two third, one third. Normal what we do. And yeah, we have, I think, in, we have, I think, increased our uh, UHP for current quarter, as we have indicated. So, what is the UHP non-UHP breakup? We will provide the exact breakup as such, but yes, it is the uh, we have increased the portion compared to. Last year, by at least five seven percent more. Well, it's such a wide wide increase of five to seven percent. Yeah, but going forward, it will further go up. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Somil Mehta from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is I missed out on the approx uh, decline in needle coke prices we are looking at. Uh, how very rough number would be? No, oh, we didn't say we are looking at decline in needle coke prices. I think you've uh, got it wrong. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, the needle coke, uh, uh, as soon as this year's contract start, uh, kicked in, the first quarter results already factor the increased prices and those prices are likely to remain the same through till the end of the year. And when uh, so somebody asked about this softening thing, and uh, to that we replied that uh, we are sure needle coke the suppliers must be looking at graphite industry. So is it fair to assume that for the balance year of uh, CY19, we will continue to have high cost uh, needle coke, that is for about four and a half thousand dollars what is, has been reported yeah, in the news reports? For the time being, you can say that. You can assume that. Sure. And uh, so from the channel checks and some from some of the customers, it believes that, you know, certain imports uh, have gone up and uh, also in the export market there is some down trading wherein some players are shifting from uh, UHP to non-UHP. Uh, I mean, are you seeing any such signs given that you have a very strong export base? Uh, I just wanted to clarify, the switching between UHP and HP, it doesn't happen actually. It's, it's not otherwise, why would anybody use UHP I and mean, everybody would take the, just the cheapest electrodes? Because the whole design of the plant is like that. There's a furnace who's uh, expected to operate at a certain uh, current level. With which that, there's a transformer behind it, and it's supposed to churn out so many tons of steel in 40 minutes. So that, that 
the quality requirement, it, it's not easily replaceable. So this is a myth that uh, some people have switched from UHP and HP. If that were to be true, then uh, all the world can do that. So that's not uh, possible. Your the second earlier question was about this uh, Chinese exports. Yes, you are right. The Chinese uh, uh, exports to India uh, have increased, uh, especially after removal of those anti-dumping duties. And uh, there's, uh, we seem, it seems there was a time lag between uh, the electric arc, new electric arc furnace plants coming up and the electrodes, electrode plants uh, or electrode production came up faster than China, which has resulted in China increasing their uh, exports to the rest of the world and dropping prices. Sure. Uh, my last question, I mean, while, uh, uh, while you mentioned that, you know, it's not easy to switch, but, you know, can you switch from, you know, a higher dia UHP to a lower dia HP and, you know, I mean, is there a change in realization because of that? No, actually, you, you, you can't do that. Actually, that's what I said. That, that's how the plant is made. When the plant is made, the furnace specs, the diameter, everything is all decided. There is no room to play in that. Otherwise, it is not an optimal solution. See, you can always change the wheels of a car and take a narrow wheel, but then, then that's not how the car is supposed to run. Okay, okay. So once you start using uh, 600 mm or maybe 750 or whatever, 480, you will continue to use that. That's a fair assumption, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's not easy at all, I would say. Ask any steel company and they'll tell you. And it needs sure. a huge investment with those copper arms to be changed. Nobody will do it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anubhav Sahu from MC Research. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Couple of questions. Uh, first, in your opening remarks, uh, you mentioned UHP electrode price might stabilize at current levels. Uh, uh, so the current levels should be uh, around six thousand, seven thousand dollars for the UHP. Uh, would that be a right instance, sir? No, we will not uh, comment on specific pricing. Uh, what, what we can uh, share with you is that that some amount of, or rather the major amount of correction in UHP pricing has already taken place in this, which, which is reflective of uh, in this quarter results. I'm talking about uh, UHP. So major part of correction has already uh, taken place. And going forward, there's not much room left for correction, but I will not comment on this uh, the price levels you have uh, said. Okay, but, but, but sir, uh, could you guide us, sir, what is the market prevailing price? I mean, not for the company, but... Uh, in general, what should be the range uh, which should be prevailing in the market right now for the UHP? The same question in a different manner. I mean, there's no difference. I mean, you see, it's a competitive market, and in the in in the public space, we cannot divulge so many so many other things. Okay, got it, sir. And secondly, sir, on the needle coke prices, uh, uh, I remember that for the Jan to June uh, period, you had the contract. You are contracting in the range of uh, 4,500 to 5,000. So when you're saying that it is now already priced, it is getting priced in the Q1 results. So are you referring to this same range? So first of all, we never said it is 4,500 to 5,000. As I earlier said in response to your query about the sales prices, we would never have said uh, this number 4,500 to 5,000. So, so again, I mean, let us refrain from specific numbers. I'm, the prices were different in January, June, and the prices are different in second half. Now, what it was in first half and what it was it is in the second half, uh, it, it, this, this is a question of, uh, it's a very confidential information, and I'm very sorry we cannot share it. Uh, no, I got it. When I refer to that time period, I mean that you only guided that when the contracts happen. Uh, it it uh, it seeps into, into the financial statement with a six month lag because of the production cycle. Yes, so, that you are right. I mean, the contract for needle coke is done on a half yearly basis for the first half and second half. And you are also right. There is a time lag because our production cycle is so long that uh, it generally spills over for the next quarter. If the prices, let's say, were to drop from shipment for shipment starting January 2020, its impact will not be seen in that first quarter. It will be seen in the second quarter because it takes some time to, to get the product, uh, to get the needle coke 
from US or Japan or from UK, then the production cycle of electrodes itself is very large. Got it, got it. So, so I mean, uh, any inkling on the price level for needle coke? I mean, you said that probably it should uh, uh, probably stabilize again at the level which we have seen recently, but uh, and any idea, any, any guidance on that? No, as I said, the, the, as I said, the prices for January, December shipments uh, they are already contracted. So there is nothing new to talk about. I mean, the the new prices will only be app applicable for shipments starting from January, and those prices will only be discussed in November. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, that's all for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star, then one. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Soni, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Thank you for your information so far. So my question is, uh, as per your uh, uh, statement just before, that the prices for needle cork you already know for the rest half of the year till December, right? So... Um, Considering if the uh, let's uh, assume if the price of the our our final product on the sales side remain also stable, what is it right now for the first quarter? Then are we expecting the same level of sale for the rest of uh, 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 two more quarters? Uh, the profitability which we have right now. See, as I said, the, the needle coke cost, the higher needle coke cost is already factored in. Our needle coke cost for the quarter that we are talking about, April, June, and the quarter which we are currently sitting in, the second quarter, is, is more or less similar. So on that side, yes, uh, more or less, it, it, there is no change in that. Uh, secondly, as we, as we answered the, in, the, in the previous question, we are moving more towards the UHP electrodes than the non-UHP electrodes, where the competition is much less because of uh, China not being there. So that, that will help us to, to increase our non-UHP uh, sales with better margins. Now, on the volumes, again, I mean, as I said, uh, a lot of other uh, graphite producers have announced a cut of 15 to 20 percent. So we only hope that uh, this cut of 15 to 20 percent is going to help to stabilize the market because the demand of electrode has come down. There is a lot of inventory in the in the pipeline. So it's it's very difficult to to, to tell you about the volumes. I mean, uh, when there is a situation that there are more electrodes than the demand, then when it is going to change. We, we don't know. I mean, uh, let's say if we knew, I mean, if you have followed uh, this company or the graphite industry in general, you would have seen about two years ago, uh, we had no idea that the prices of electrodes were going to go by, go up by 5 or 6 or 7x. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, the electrode prices were uh, seven times more than they, than they were in, let's say, the first quarter of 2017. So if uh, if anybody had that idea, I mean, uh, we would have, we would not have sold anything for those six months, and just kept waiting to sell all those products at five, six, seven times the price. But in in practice, it doesn't happen. I mean, you are in the market; you cannot withdraw from the market even if you think that the prices are going to be two x or three x or six x six months down the road. So it's a, it's a very difficult question to answer as to where do we see the prices or the volumes. We can only talk about a very near-term current quarter or maybe at the most next quarter. But beyond that, any anything that we'll be that we'll be talking about will be mere speculation. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree fully that because many things depend upon demand supply and which we do not have a control over. But as you said just now that for next quarter at least, do we have some kind of conservative estimate at least for, for the volume for the next quarter, the current, the current quarter we are in right now, maybe? 
No, I'm pretty sure it will not be less than this. It will, it will, it will only be, it could only be higher than this. It will not be lower than that. On a, on a margin and on the bottom line. No, it's not about the margin. We are talking about volumes. Okay. Uh, because there's a non UHP segment of that 20 percent that is still under pressure. Might be a little more. It will further uh, be under pressure for this quarter. UHP pricing, okay, that's more stable uh, that way. So we are not commenting uh, absolutely on the profitability part. We're just okay. talking about the volumes are likely to remain the same for the second quarter. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star, then one. The next question is from the line of Lalit Ariwala from BS Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Ah, you see, uh, yes, please. Uh, you see, EBITDA from last quarter, 62%, it has come down to 46% in this quarter. That last results which have been declared. So what do you expect further down? Uh, would you be able to maintain this or how much do you expect, you know, it can come down? There might be a slightly downward pressure. That's all and slightly I have said. And because the major part of correction, as you can see yourself, has already taken place. Okay. So can we assume that uh, uh, as a guidance that it would be around 45%? Or it could be around uh, 40%. No, it will continue to be under pressure, and uh, the UHP is at, uh, a much more stable compared to the non-UHP part. So margins, uh, uh, you might see uh, some more softening. Okay. Second question. Uh, you see, needle coke prices, as compared to uh, the first half, and the contract for the second half of this year, uh, what has been the difference? Whether there has been any change or it is uh, continuing to be the same? So they will remain the same, actually, because it's, uh, it is uh, through till the end of the year, and all the increased prices uh, have already been factored in in okay. the first quarter, the results which you are looking at. Okay. And these prices are likely to remain the same through till the end of the year. Okay. So as you said, that contract takes place uh, twice a year for six months. So the prices have been the same for even the second second half of this year. Yeah. More or less the same what you had contracted for the first half of uh, this yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Achha, what would be the conversion cost from needle coke, needle coke uh, for you, for uh, okay. UHP grade? Of course. Approximate, approximate, approximate conversion cost in dollar terms. No, no, that, that of course we won't share. I mean, of course, uh, you don't expect us to answer that question. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ruben Paliwala, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. I just wanted to know that uh, uh, do you see the appreciation of dollar impacting uh, positively uh, to the bottom line of the company? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you please repeat that? My question is, sir, uh, that the appreciation in the dollar, will it benefit the bottom line of the company? Oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. But please also note that uh, our purchases of uh, Coke are also in dollar terms. So there's a natural hedge between the two. But to some extent, it should benefit if it stays that way. Yes, certainly. That is, that is what I mean. I didn't ask the uh, question like the pre uh, previous person that what is the conversion and all. But uh, I'm sure that I mean, the raw material price is also uh, in dollar terms and the sale price is also in dollar terms, so, but yeah, if it is yeah. appreciation, yeah, okay, okay, so thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments.
thank you friends for uh, for for understanding this uh, current situation and asking some very very relevant questions and i look forward to speaking to you in 3 months time from now thank you very much thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen on behalf of hgg limited that concludes this conference